Hello, my name is Russell Preston Brown from Adobe Systems, and these are my six favorite Adobe Photoshop CS6 features. Let's get started. In this brand new interface, which is really wonderful, and I'm going to start with Adobe Camera Raw 7.0. Now I have an image here that I took, and of course I've overexposed the image. I overexpose it because I want to show you the great new dynamic range that you can pull out of a really overexposed image. I'm going to go right over here and I'm going to load in my Adobe Camera Raw 7.0 settings and poof, I bring back that detail. Check this out. Here under my settings, I now can go in and control the highlights separated directly from the shadows. And this is new. Also notice that my sliders begin in the center and I can have negative and positive values. That's also new. So think about reopening some of your older images and work on them with this new Adobe Camera Raw 7.0. Okay, let's move on. Let's go right over here to my next favorite feature, which has to be adaptive wide angle. Now, we've all taken wide angle images and this image happens to be taken with a super wide fisheye lens. And we've gone into filters and you can run a lens correction. But now, there's adaptive wide angle that gives you the ability to control the exact areas within your image that you'll adjust. I really love this because it combines some of the wide angle values with the control of straightening lines. So I brought this image in and notice that it's identified this through its metadata as a 15 millimeter fisheye lens. So it already has the profile for this lens built in. So if I click and drag with this tool, it arcs along the same lines of distortion that appear within my image. I click and let go and it straightens that line perfectly. Now I'm going to go in over here and apply another line right here. So I've reintroduced a really nice straight horizon, yet I still have the distortion happening within my image. But I also want to go in and correct this strange distortion in this line in the ceiling. And while I'm at it, let's go in and add in this line as well. Now this image works really well because it shows my lines of distortion and I can track right along those and get that the way I like it just with a few clicks like this. Then go in and scale my image up. And if I wanted to go back in and use content aware fill in this area that didn't quite get filled in, I could do that as well. Let's just click OK and process this back into Photoshop. Great controls in adaptive wide angle. But wait, there's more. Another one of my favorites has to be the blur gallery. So let's start with this image here in Italy. And I want to go in and blur it to take my um, viewer's attention right into the focus point within this image. So here under my filter menu, I'm going down to blur and over to my blur gallery, which consists of three different types of blur. Field blur with multiple points, iris blur with a single point originating from the center, and tilt shift. Tilt shift automatically gives you this miniature town look as you see here. The default settings are blurring the top and the bottom and giving me this strip in the middle to this miniature set that I've built. <laughs> I can now go in and adjust the focus of those areas with this really nice new interface built right into the viewer right here. Of course I can go over here to the right and adjust the blur but I can do it right here. I can also adjust the blur radius by clicking and dragging on these lines and the fade off of the blur right here at the top. What I also like is to preview the mask. By clicking the M key on my keyboard I can go in and adjust the mask for this rotation, adjustments to it in any way I want, or even adjust the amount of blur. So I have all of my controls here directly on the mask. I can also, when I'm done, export the mask as a channel that I can use later, for example, to apply noise back into those areas that I've blurred. So once again, this is the blur gallery. And if I didn't mention, you can also combine field blur, iris blur, and tilt blur together. Moving on, let's go ahead and click OK. Now, Content Aware Move. Here you can see I've selected this tree. 
I've selected my new tool over here called Content Aware Move. Now we know about Content Aware Fill, but imagine that you can take a single layered document, like this flattened document, you can click on a selection of the tree and move it to the left, and through the magic of science and technology at Adobe, I can move the tree and it will automatically fill in the area where I've moved it from. None of this cloning or going back in, just select it and move it. But wait, again, there's always more. What if I go down here, for example, and I have a watermark on my image, but I've flattened the image, but I really need to move the watermark. Once again, check this out. I can click on the watermark and simply move it with my Content Aware Move tool over here to the right, poof. It's now there on the right, it's filled in on the left. Okay, next, the new crop tool. Now here I have an image that clearly needs to be cropped. My horizon doesn't look quite right. So let's select the new crop tool and take a look at this. Check this out. The new interface appears for the crop tool with new controls here in the option bar. Check out the behavior as I move this down to crop it. Notice that it automatically centers around the center of your crop region. Now that didn't happen in the past. You had to move it and adjust it. Also, if I click outside the region here and rotate it, check this out. It's now rotating the actual image. Now this seems quite logical and you're going, well, that's not new. If you go up here to the options bar and you want to shift back to the classic mode, just like this, you can go back in and see how it used to work. That's so old and boring. The image doesn't rotate, the actual crop region is rotating, so the preview isn't quite right. Let's go back to my regular mode here. I really like this capability of centering it and rotating it and getting it just right. Then finally, my automatic straightening tool right here at the top. I can then click on the horizon and drag and instantly straighten that, double click and get my image just the way I want it with the new crop capabilities. Okay, let's finish this off with video. So video is now inside of Adobe Photoshop CS6. That's right, you heard me correctly. I'm gonna bring up my timeline here and let's take a look at the great new features. To begin with, it's starting to look sort of similar to Adobe Premiere or even After Effects. Check it out. My video is now contained within its own video group here in my layers panel. I also have sound separated on its own audio track. Finally, what a great way to work with sound. And I can go in here and address one of my video clips, click on the end, and I can start to edit the end and preview the exact point in the video where I want to stop and make the cut. Not only that, these magicians, programmers at Adobe, have set my end point directly related to my new endpoint to that video. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm gonna right click on this and set this to the exact value of five seconds for that. Hit my enter key because I now wanna finish this off with drag and drop fade effects. This has got to be the best. I've always wanted the ability to use fade effects by simply clicking on them dragging them over the intersection between two clips and instantly have a fade effect, in this case for two seconds. Let's add a fade effect to these other two sections just like this. And just to finish this off, let's have a fade to black because we always have to have that. So I've got video, fading, I've got music, I select my play button, and it starts to fade the images together, the movie clips, plays the sound. I should also mention, just because I can, that you can now work with text and graphics and you now have motion controls on still images, text and graphics. It does not get much better than this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, you've just seen a great set of new features inside of Photoshop CS6. Adobe Camera Raw 7.0 support, adaptive wide angle, 
blur gallery, content aware move, the crop tool, and finally video support inside of Photoshop CS6. Give them a try, they're fantastic.